All right, we're gonna be talking about warm and cool colors today. What are they? How do you use them? How do you think about them when you're painting? How do you identify them? We're gonna talk about all that. So let's just jump onto the palette right away. All right, so I'll just jump on in. I'll start with cool colors. So what are cool colors? Cool colors are colors that evoke the thought of, you know, cold, being cold. Think of, you know, ice, snow, think of blues, purples cool greens. What are warm colors? They're the opposite. They're colors that evoke a sense of warmth. Think of fire, the sun, you got yellow, oranges, reds, colors like that. Now I'm going to be honest, I don't really think about colors as being warm or cool. I think of them being as warmer or cooler. It's all relative. It depends on what colors are around that color. Because let's say, oh, green, green's a cool color, right? Well, this green isn't. This green is very, very warm. So it just helps to think of it as warmer or cooler. Now I've gotten the question before people saying, oh, is it true that warm light casts cool shadows and cool light casts warm shadows? I've never really gone by that because there are cases that that isn't true. And so if there are cases it's not true, then I, I wouldn't rely on it. I feel like there's a better way to think about warm and cool colors. All right, now for this example, I got this very cool blue right next to this toned down orange. And it's very clear, like which one's the warm color, which one's the cool color. You know, this is the cool color, this is the warm color. But if I get rid of that blue and I put a very bright orange like this, now which one's the cool color? Now this is definitely the cooler color compared to that because it's all relative. So when I'm painting, I'm not thinking of really warm or cool colors. I'm just trying to match the color that I see. And if I can match it, the temperature will be there. And I always highly suggest for beginners to have a simple palette as possible. Here, I just have the primaries in white. I got ultramarine blue, Elizabeth crimson, Windsor lemon or cadmium lemon and titanium white. So when I'm mixing a color, like I'm not thinking, oh, is this cool or warmer? I'm just thinking, all right, does this color need more blue? Does it need more red? Does it need more yellow or does it need more white? So let's say I'm trying to mix this color right here. Like I'm not really concerned about temperature really. I'm just like, all right, that's, I'm gonna start out with a purple. So I'm gonna get some blue and some uh, red and some white and get a purple going. And as I'm mixing it, I'm just thinking in my head, which one of these am I gonna add? And I'm like, all right, this is looking purple, good, but it's not desaturated enough. How do I desaturate purple? I do it with purple's complement yellow. If you don't know what a complement is, I highly suggest uh, watching my shortcut to color mixing guide. I'll put a link to it in the description below. I go over how I mix any color using the primaries in white. It's very helpful. All right, so I'm trying to desaturate this. I'm also noticing this is a little more red. Like I want to add some more blue. So I'm going to go some blue. And you see when you only have four options, it makes it very simple what to do because you only have four options. If you have like a whole bunch of different colors on your palette, you have like 10 or 12 colors and you have 10 or 12 options you could be doing. And there's no right or wrong way to get to a color. There's, you know, many, many different ways to get to color. And it just depends on how you want to get there. So I'm just bouncing around from these until I'm dialing in what color I want. I'm getting pretty close here. That's pretty, Maybe a little more blue. All right, that's pretty close. Now the biggest complaint I get from people when I tell them to you know, use the primaries in white is they say, oh, well, it takes me so long to get to the color and I have to use up so much paint uh, to mix up the color. I keep on having to pull more and more and more and I end up with a big pull of paint that I don't need that much paint. Well, first off, the better you get, the uh, less that will happen. But even if that does happen, say like I used up all the purple that I need and I still have this big pile of purple, like you can still manipulate this pile. Like say later in the painting, I have something that's a little more blue. I can be like, all right, well, I can kind of push this purple. Say, you know, I got a, like a kind of like a purplish blue in a certain area. Oh, there we go. Well, if that's neutralized a little bit, like it's gray, like I got like a gray cloud or something. I can push this more to a gray. And it's, you can branch off from it too. Like I'm always doing that. I'm always branching off. And the great thing about doing it this way is one, you say paint, but also it's going to give your painting color harmony. Let's say 
you know, I have this main color for something, but there's a part of that color that's in the sun and it's a little bit warmer. So I can kind of branch off, I can pull some of this color in. So I'm starting with the color of the object, which is good, it's gonna keep you on track. And now I'm lighting it, and this is the part of that object that's getting hit by the sun maybe. So there you go. Now the one thing to look out for when you're doing this is sometimes you're gonna wanna start a new batch of clean color. You know, you're not gonna be able to pull from a previous pile, because for one reason or another, you need to have the color to be really clean. Good example of this is sky. You know, I would, I would always uh, clean my brush really well. Some painters even have like a separate brush that they save just for the sky because a lot of times the sky needs to be very clean color. So if I'm mixing up a sky, got like a light blue, maybe a touch of yellow. Now I can get like a nice sky blue. And this is actually very important because I feel like I see a lot of people, their paintings are one or the other. They're either, all the colors are very desaturated and they don't have any spots where the color actually gets pretty vibrant or it's the other way where all their colors are very vibrant and they didn't desaturate anything. And you're gonna want to have both working at the same time uh, to play off of each other and to make your painting you know, more dynamic. Like take a look at this painting from Rembrandt. You can see in the gold helmet, there's a lot of neutralized, you know, darker colors, but when it comes time for the brightest parts, he actually uses very vibrant yellows and oranges. And the contrast between these two is what's gonna make this metal helmet really pop. All right, let's do one more color matching example with a warm color. So what I have here is pretty close to a burnt sienna. So if you're thinking, oh, what about earth tones? Can you make earth tones? Yep, you can make any color you need with these primary colors. So when I see this, the first thing I think is like reddish orange. So I'm gonna start with some red, throw in some yellow. Like, all right, this is very vibrant. I need to neutralize it with Orange's complement, which is blue. All right, we're getting there, maybe a little more red. All right, too much red. Gonna knock it back with yellow and blue. All right, we're getting there. A little more yellow. All right, that's pretty close. Now, another thing to realize about warm and cool colors is that warm colors come to the foreground more and cool colors recede to the background more. An example of this is in a landscape. This is atmospheric perspective. Um, it's the idea that as you get further back in space, certain colors drop out and it's warmer colors that drop out sooner. First color to drop out is yellow and then reds and then you're left with just blues. That's why mountains in the distance can seem very purple or blue. All right, I hope that helped explain warm and cool colors. Hopefully you feel more comfortable uh, dealing with those in your next painting. If you have questions still, leave those questions in the comments section. I'll do my best to answer them uh, down there or in a later video. Again, the shortcut to color mixing guide is uh, linked in the description below. Also, when you sign up for that, you automatically are signing up for the Paint Coach newsletter, which you wanna be signed up for because that's where I'm gonna first release my Foundations of Oil Painting course, which I'm in the process of finishing up. I might be waiting until the first of the year uh, to release it, but you don't wanna miss out on when I do release that. If you're looking for full painting video tutorials, I have those on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. And if you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. And you're still here. That must mean you really like this video. May I suggest then hitting that subscribe button. Also, you'll probably like this video as well.